because that's where their heart is. The Bible says, wherever a man's heart is, so shall his treasure be also. So it's all about what's in the heart. It's not the money. It was already in the heart from the begin with. If he, if that rich person became poor today, they would be evil still without the money. Never short stopping, now I'm winning like I'm Jida. Steady through the rigor, yeah, I'm getting bigger. It's fighting in them trenches, now I'm making seven figures like. 10 common money myths that keeps you from getting to where you want to go, or at least becoming a first generation cash flow millionaire. But we want to bounce these things off of biblical truths. And the best way to do that is also not only to bounce things off my good friend, Pastor Bay, business partner down there in Gulfport, Mississippi, alongside his bride there too, right quick say, hello. <laughs> and so we are, uh, by the way, they minister at church down there in Gulfport, Mississippi and in transition out um, from Georgia back to Gulfport Mississippi, Gulfport, Mississippi. I understand that you have a new associate, a new partner also that opened an office in, in Georgia, Pastor Bay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good to see you, Matt. Paula, always a pleasure. Uh, yeah, our senior marketing director, uh, Victoria Rayburn, just launched the office. We're excited about that location. And um, man, it's just taking off, man. Uh, we're excited. And we just made it back to Mississippi right now. Dry. <laughs> Rain every day. Awesome. Well, for those of you guys tuning in, welcome to this episode of the Seven Figure Scripture Series. And by the way, uh, uh, we want you to make sure you reach back out to us and, uh, uh, because you came up with this name, came up with this name, and uh, we want to give you $500 as well as another $500 contribution to your church and charity. So with that being said, let's jump right into it. Uh, this is Pastor Rashawn and his bride, Wanda Bay. In transition, take a little bit of time of their journey out. So uh, let's jump right into this article, which I thought was an interesting article, which actually destroys the desire for one to gain financial literacy. And uh, a, a brilliant article, I thought, and I just want to review that with you, 10 reasons or 10 myths about money in the Bible. So number one, seeking wealth is sinful. It says here, Pastor Bay, James 14, James chapter 4, verse 13, warns readers not to boast about making a profit. It is the boasting that is condemned, uh, not financial gain. Without gainful employ, it is impossible to fulfill the Christian duty to provide for families and give to the poor. What are your thoughts about that? Man, like you said, some people take stuff out of context because they're looking at what they really want to portray instead of looking at the whole message. And he said the boasting, the boasting, the bragging on how much I have and you know, I got this and I got that because everything comes from the Lord and he wants you to give honor to him and not put it on yourself because we can't do anything and he'll prove it to you. All you have to do is keep living. And um, that that's that's my thoughts on that, Pat, um, uh, Matt. Very good. Number two, uh, rich people are evil. This is a good one. Rich people are evil. It is true that there are examples of evil men with money in the Bible, evil men with money in the Bible, such as the parable of the rich man and Lazarus. However, the Bible also teaches that God gives power to attain wealth and adds no sour to it because he also blessed Abraham, Job, Solomon, Joseph, uh, Arimathea, and others with great riches. So what's your thoughts? Man, there's, there's, there's uh, evil broke people. <laughs> there's evil poor people. You know, there's evil rich people. There's evil. I mean, evil is always around because think about this. If there was no evil, there would be no good. Good can exist without evil because taking away evil would be evil in itself because then that takes away your choice to choose God. Mm. So he wants you to have your choices. And being that you have your choices, that gives you the freedom to serve. And, and, and that's, that's, that's my take on that because, you know, there's a lot of people that money brings either the goodness out of them or it brings the badness. So, mm. A person has to identify who they are before the money because all the money does is make them go to a higher level of who they really are. So if a person, you know, likes old school and they got one car, if they become a millionaire, probably going to have about 15 of them because that's where their heart is. The Bible says wherever a man's heart is, so shall his treasure be also. So it's all about what's in the heart. It's not the money. It was already in the heart from the begin with. If, he, if that rich person became poor today, they would be evil still without the money. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Money is a magnifier. Uh, number three, people only get rich 
by lying, cheating, and stealing. And many scriptures talk about dishonest gain, but that is not all the Bible says about getting rich. The Bible says that the hand of the diligent makes rich, which is uh, the word of uh, the, the writings of King Solomon, uh, Proverbs 10, uh, 10, chapter 4, uh, 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 chapter, uh, 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 ch Proverbs chapter 10, verse 4, and the humility and the fear of the Lord are riches, honor, and life, which is Proverbs chapter 22, verse 4. Thoughts on that? The Bible says the blessings of the Lord maketh rich and add no sorrow to it. So, you know, the Lord first always wanted us to be rich, but he wanted us to be rich in his kingdom and making sure that he gets the credit. You know, um, yeah, some people lie, some people steal and cheat, but it doesn't last. It doesn't last. It's not long term because the Bible also says whatever you sow, you're going to reap. Yeah. So <laughs> you sow bad seed you're going to get negative. You're going to get uh, a, a bad fruit because he said, I've never seen a good tree bear, ba bear bad fruit. And I've never seen a, a bad tree bear good fruit. Wow. So it's all about what's in the root and yeah. where the root is. That's where you're going to trace the fruit. And so uh, any takes on that, babe? No, just, you know, just just listening to it. And, you know, the word of God saying everything I, I live by, Matt, is about the word of God. And he said, um, the devil come to steal, kill, and destroy. But God said, I come that you have life and have it more abundantly, yes. you know, and that's that's what we just have to stand on and having abundantly, it means everything. And reading this book, I'm reading the book of the wealthy, uh, wealthy people of the Bible. Yes. And it gives everything, you know, because Matt, to be honest with you, me, I wanted to make sure because I knew what PHP had to offer financially. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to make sure that I wasn't, you know, in it all for the wrong reasons, you know, but God said he want me to be, have plenty, you know, he want me to, he want me to have whatever I want on this earth. You know, the word says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteous and all things will be added unto you. And that's mean everything, financial problems, situations that go away, everything, you know, it's, it, everything is in the word of God and people take out, like my husband said, what they want to take out of it. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, one of my yeah. favorite scriptures of that is Deuteronomy 8.18, which is God has given us the power to create wealth. And uh, yes, I hope we use that power and yes. not, not uh, let it sit on the shelf. Uh, number right. four, God gives, God gives us to give everything. God, I'm sorry. God expects us to give everything to the poor. The Bible often talks about giving money to the poor. And Jesus challenges the rich young ruler to sell everything and give it away. The rich young ruler loved money more than God. Yes. Yes, it's an issue. So Jesus was trying to show him that money was an idol to him and that we cannot serve both God and riches. If God wants to give everything to the poor, he would have not told us that the good man leaves an inheritance for the grandchildren. Thoughts, Pastor Bay? Man, I mean, he doesn't want you to give everything, you know, because, I mean, the people that were rich, they had unlimited supply. That's what rich means, unlimited supply. So he knew whatever they had today, all they had to give today, they were going to still have more for themselves. And plus, he also challenges us to give that spiritual guidance of the direction pointing to Christ, because without the, the direction pointing to Christ, the money's not going to last. The Bible says a fool and their money one day will soon depart. So if a person that's poor doesn't change their mindset, no matter what you give them today, they won't have it tomorrow. <laughs> Amazing there. Let's go to the next one here. Number five, uh, money. Oh, here's a favorite one. Money is the root of all evil. And it says here, this is like the most common of all the money myths that originate from the Bible. This myth about money in the Bible comes from 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. End quote. It's not the money that is evil. It is the love of money that condemns. In other words, loving money more than God. Thoughts on that? You know, like I said, your first love ought to go to him because the Bible says he's a jealous God. And, you know, being in business and being an entrepreneur, I can be honest and say it's so easily to get off task and get off course. But still and all, in spite of your drive and your determination of running business and constantly putting more time maybe in business than you are in your word or more time into your your business than you may do pray or more do this still my love is always going to be with him 
My love is never going to forget where I come from. That's why it's so important to always remember where you come from, what was the beginning of your journey, where your testimony is, because the testimony always ends that he brought me out, not my money. Hmm. Hmm. There it is. Uh, number six, another money myth here that keeps people from increasing their financial literacy. Being poor is more honorable than being rich. This money myth creeps up out of many teachings in the Bible, but it couldn't be further from the truth. The Bible says that rich and poor have this in common. The Lord is the maker of them both, as you were saying earlier, Pastor Ben. Plus, Proverbs identifies that poverty is often, not always, caused by poor stewardship and laziness. Laziness. These qualities are not honorable at all. Your thoughts? You know, the Bible says, let the poor say I'm rich. Let the sick say I'm healed. God is a God of overcoming, conquering, coming out, deliverance, setting free, rising above, being the lender and not the borrower. So if, if, if the Bible wanted me to be poor, how can I lend anything if I'm begging? If I'm always begging, I'm always borrowing. That means I never have nothing of my own. But if you, that's why he said, you know, attain everything from him and not looking for them. See, a lot of us go to them, the bank, go to this person, depending on them, but we never rely on him. So as long as he is the source of your strength, if he's the supplier of your every need, that's what he wants because that doesn't do anything but give credit to the kingdom. Mm -hmm. It all gives credit to the kingdom. Everything leads to him. But as soon as it drifts and shifts, then uh, that's when it takes away. But poor, he would never want anybody to be poor because he said, in, in my kingdom, there are many mansions. Yeah. Uh, last, last time I checked, a mansion wasn't a 900 square foot uh, building. A mansion is 10,000, 50,000 square feet. So uh, wh why would he put emphasis on mansions and streets paved with gold? And he said, if it wasn't true, I wouldn't have told you so. So, you know, when I look at that, everything that he's saying, if people are looking at the way that you're reading it, then they're just taking it out of context. Yes. Awesome. Very good. Next one, number seven, the early church. Let's talk about the early church. The early church was communistic. It says here, the book of Acts teaches that the early church sold their property to help those in need, having all things in common amongst all the people. What many people fail to note is that the early church, one, had property, and number two, sold it willingly, and there's no compulsion by the church or the government for them to sell their belongings. Pastor Bay, uh, Wanda, Rashawn, you guys run your own church. Is this, is, this a, is this a teaching that you agree with or don't agree with, or is this a myth? Well, I, I, I it, it, the, we, like always, we take things out of context. You know, we take it out of context and we go just like the, the, the lady that gave all that she had and she had one penny, you know, on top of the guy that had all the riches. But God didn't care about that. It's, he, all, he, cares, he cared about what was from the heart and she gave all that she had. Yeah. So God honored her more than, she did the, than he did the rich man. And so saying that the scripture about the, uh, what you just asked, you know, it's all what they want to do out of their hearts. You know, God don't say sell everything you have to give. He said, take care of the poor. You know, don't, don't be, a, don't be afraid to entertain strangers because it says in the word that it, it will be poor people it will be poverty, mm -hmm. but we, we have to make sure that, you know, if I want to sell my house or everything that I have to help take care of them. Yes. If I do it out of the kind of kindness of my heart, Yes. And that's what what happened then me doing it out of the kindness of my heart, because I don't need it. It's going to come back to me because I'm going to now reap what I sow, you know. So babe, what you got, you know, and, and the, the key scripture, he said the poor will be with us always. So that means that no matter how much we give, the poor is still going to be around. Exactly. <laughs> you, you're not going to change. You're not going to change that. We can't save the world. Even when Jesus is walking the earth. He couldn't save the world. People still <laughs> denied him. They lied. I mean, so if, if, if he couldn't do it, he knew that they're always going to be here because of the mindset. When they took the children of Israel out of Egypt, they still had Egypt in them. I'll repeat myself again. Even though they crossed over the Red Sea and came out of Egypt, they still wanted to go back because the Egypt never left inside their heart. It's like you could take a person out of the hood, 
but sometimes the hood is still not out of them. <laughs> and so, and so these things, these messages, sometimes people take the text and they try to guilt you and try to make you think that you can change the whole world when he'd already said the poor is going to be with us always. So that's just it. So profound, you know, if, if you're right, if you're, if you're seeing poor people in the Bible, which is, you know, 6,000 years of documented human history, and then you still see people today that are poor and rich, I mm -hmm. think long term you got to choose which one you want to be here on earth based on what God has given you and sent you away and the proper stewardship uh, of those opportunities and blessings um, with, you know, and doing the most of what you have. Number nine, um, let's look at this. Property ownership, number nine, let's see here. Property ownership is wrong. The, the earth is the Lord's and all it contains. Yes, the early church sold the property so it can give it to those in need, but God has made us stewards of this earth. Part of that stewardship is property ownership. Uh, Abraham was, supposed, was promised land as an inheritance and he bought a cave <laughs> as a town payment of that promise. Property ownership is God of part of, of God's plan. And I would also say, this basically talking about an asset. And since we're in the life insurance business, I also want to add this to it as well, because lots of times people say that, you know, life insurance, uh, life insurance is, is an asset, just like a property is an asset that you hand on from one generation to another. So thoughts on that, that ownership is wrong. Well, he promised us that he would give you land. And he even said a land flowing with milk and honey that was amazing i was like well where's the cow you know i was like dang that's powerful he's gonna have the milk and, <laughs> and, and honey flowing but that's how that's how powerful it was and what he wants to give you he wants people to own something he wants people to have what is theirs and what was amazing is when he told them to possess it they were so afraid to go out because they looked at the people and how big they were he said well what did you see he said, yeah, they have milk and honey. They was flowing. He said, well, let's go take it. He said, well, no, nah, they're big. They're giants. They're, you know, whatever. And so a lot of times in life, we're afraid to take what already belongs to us. And it's amazing how the opportunities could be right in your lap. And yet you let something that you think is bigger than you take away what God has already put. You. I got to pray about it. Or, you know, let me take some time to think about it. This and that. He already gave us the opportunity. He's already given us the vision, but yet we let the giant of the invisible, which is our mindset, stop us from what he already has given us. But there's always somebody out the bunch. There's always somebody out the bunch. And that was Caleb who said, man, we could take it. <laughs> you know, hey, let's go. If I got to go by myself and that teaches you that entrepreneurship, sometimes you're going to have to stand by yourself and say, regardless of what my mother say, regardless of what my father says, regardless of what everybody says, I'm going to stand on what I believe on. And I believe that I can take it. Yes, I'm saying. Yeah. And speaking of a particular woman, uh, Matt, in the Bible, mm -hmm. um, her and her husband was very wealthy. And but uh, she had told her husband, I want to say the prophet Elijah coming through town. Uh, but she wanted to build another part to her house. That way, when Elijah, the prophet come and it may not have been a lot, but when the prophet came, that he will have a place to stay, okay. you know? So, so, so if God don't want us to have property, how are we going to help the next person in, in that is in need? Yeah. You know, you guys have opened your, your, your marvelous house to us and you held this big old event for us. But if you didn't have, if you had a small sure. space, how are you going to do it? Yeah. You know, we open up our doors and God blessed us to do so. You know, people come down, we, we open our doors up. We give them the code and everything to our house. But if it wasn't God given, how, how would I be able to do it? How would I be able to do it freely if it wasn't God's given? You know, so he, he, he wants us to have property to help somebody that's in need. You know, and, and so speaking of the, the lady in the, in the Bible, she knew what was best. You know, she had God, she got, had God love in her, but her husband was a little bit different, but when he came to town, she fed him. She gave him a place to stay. That was his particular place yep. for, for every time he comes into town. So when it comes to God not wanting us to own anything, they taking again the word out of context because he want us to have abundantly. You know, it, it's, he it speak of abundantly all over through the Bible. So you mean to tell me God don't want us to have that? You know, so. Amen.
Last but not least, number 10. We should give all of our money away to make an entire life and give it all away and live like a pauper. Many Christians throughout history, I believe that they ought to give everything away and live like a pauper. The great hymn writer Fanny Crosby was one of these. But is this what God expects? In the parable of the talents, Matthew 25, Jesus con commends those who invest their money, increasing its value, he condemns those who bury it. Final thoughts on these 10 myths, Pastor Bay, Rashawn, and Man, one. at the end of the day, everything that we have comes from God. How do I know? When you look at the money, it's, it wasn't a, at its original state of the money. It came from the tree. So if you think about it, God already knew that since the beginning of the world, before the foundation, when he put the water and he put the land, he put the tree, he put the tree thousands and thousands of years ago, just so someone can get the thoughts that come from God, because everything we do originates from him. He uses somebody to come up with a thought, which the, the Bible says our thoughts are not his thoughts and our ways are not his ways, but his thoughts can be our thoughts. And so somebody got the thought from him to come up with the currency money, which translates from gold, translates from silver to translates to the dollar, which all comes from God, because if God hadn't put the tree here, there would be no dollar. Mm -hmm. If God hadn't hid, think about it. God hid the gold for us to find it. He put it here because he created everything. He said everything was created with hands that were not seen. And so when you think about it, everything that we have today, it looks like we created it. It looks like we put it here, but at the end of the day, he put it here from the beginning and he put it here for us to find it, for us to come up with the mindset to create it and mold it to what we want it to be. But you have two choices. You can either be evil doing it or you could be good doing it. And that's my, my thoughts on it. In, in this book, Matt, that I'm reading, it talks about Abraham, how God blessed him, not just blessed him, but blessed his descendants, mm -hmm. you know, making it a, a, a nation. He said he will bless. And I feel that I am inheriting all of what I have, you as well, from Abraham, mm -hmm. the seed of Abraham, you know, the children. It says, God, my God almighty, bless you and make you fruitful and multiply and multiply you, that you may be a symbol of people and give you the blessings of Abraham. And I feel that if I'm doing what God says to do and we take our money and whatever our wealth it is and that we don't use it for just our game, but just to help people, mm -hmm. you know, we can't go wrong. Yes. And whatever the myths are and whatever the people they say is are, whatever they say, it's all in the word of God. We, we standing on the word of God. He said, I'll make a great nation. You know, I bless those who bless you and I will curse those who curse you. So we're not doing anything wrong. You know, we, we it's, it's, it's okay to have something to give. And that's what we've been doing. And, you know, you look at P PHP and I have to say this, what Patrick Bet David put together and the vision that he have, he want me to have it too. That's only God sent. Mm -hmm. And I look at him as God sent for want, want us to have more and open our uh, uh, minds up to, to, to have whatever we want. You yeah. know, we continue to trust God. We believe in him and stand on his word and watch the abundance that he talk about, his promise. All that we have is just his promise. You know, seek ye first and all these things will be added. So for those of you watching this episode of the Seven Figure Squad, on the Seven Figure Squad scripture series here on Sundays, I want to know your thoughts. I want to know your comments. I want to know your follow-ups and your feedback. I want to know what you are thinking, what's going on in your mind when it comes to this. And hopefully we did a good enough job to demystify some of the common money myths that many people have in the faith-based world uh, as it comes to the Bible. Make sure you follow also the links of Pastor Rashawn and Wanda Bay. We're putting the links here below. Their names in the description also here in the screen. Make sure you follow them too as well. Is that they only grow their, not, they not only grow their business, they're also growing their ministry there in Gulfport, Mississippi. Um, and for those of you who's been wondering, how do I really get things ahead? Well, listen, this is just starting the conversation. You have to pray about this. You guys have to surround yourself with counsel. Uh, but if you don't, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Seven Figure Squad. This week, 
I'm excited about this. You know, uh, Pastor uh, uh, Wanda Bay, you've been bringing up some good books. Um, this rabbi we're interviewing this Wednesday, coming up pretty soon, is Rabbi Lappin. He's, uh, he, he's, he wrote this book, Business Secrets uh, from the Bible. It was published by Wiley. It's a very solid book here. And uh, Rabbi Lappin, a very good friend to the Christian faith, is a respected Torah scholar, Jewish leader, radio and television personality. We'll be interviewing him this Wednesday and unpacking some of the things that we are establishing here. Because the last thing I would want is for you to live your life thinking that you got to be poor, you got you can't pursue success because somebody misguided you in church or that misrepresented or misspoke what they thought the Bible would say. And hopefully these things start to get you to start thinking. But regardless. We could be full of it, right? We could be full of it. We want you to go see the word for yourself. Read the Bible for yourself, and you come back and think for yourself. And uh, we want to create independent thinkers. And uh, obviously, we want to help you become a first-generation cash flow millionaire. That being said, guys, Pastor Ron, uh, Sean uh, Bay, uh, Pastor Wanda Bay, thank you so much. I added another 25 minutes to your driving time, six hours from Georgia. <laughs> your time. Uh, into this, hopefully, it can continue, continue to bring, be a net uh, uh, on YouTube to bring people to understanding more about money and the Bible. So, I appreciate you guys. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you, Matt. If you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like, follow our Facebook business page, Money Smart Guy. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe and hit notification to be alerted next time we upload our next episode. From the Money Smart Home Office and on the road from Georgia back to Gulfport, Mississippi, I'm your Money Smart Guy. Until we meet again, continue to live smart. Continue love smart and be money smart today. Today. Bye-bye. <laughs>